I'm here to show you how to use Pinterest for your business and I'm going to just start off with a few of the basics just in case some of you are unfamiliar with Pinterest and I'm not going to spend too too long in there if you've had a little bit of experience with it. As Sherry said, my name is Cynthia Sanchez and I have just launched the Oso Pinterest podcast back in February. Uh, but the blog has been around since February of 2012, so over a year now I have been writing about nothing but Pinterest. I just fell in love with it when it started. Um, Pinterest has recently gone through uh, a new look, so if you haven't noticed the home page yet or haven't been there before, this is what it's going to look like when you go to Pinterest.com and you're going to want to sign up for an account for a personal use account. Uh, but before we get to the business side, let me tell you a fun little fact about Pinterest. It hid 10 million unique users unique users faster than any other standalone website in history. So what that means is that it, the unique users built up quickly more than any other like independent site, not like a site affiliated with Google which already had a presence or Yahoo that already had a presence on you know online. So as a startup it grew really really fast. Um, so that really got the attention of a lot of people and what really led to that huge explosion back in 2012 of the popularity of Pinterest. And um, as far as Pinterest goes, it is visually based. It is so heavily dominated by images and that's what makes or breaks you on Pinterest. How good are your images? And they don't have to be magazine quality. They don't have to be, you know, professional high-end photography quality. Um, but they have to do be they have to be interesting and talk a little bit more about that later. So these are pins and when you have a pin and you have an account, you can upload your own pins or you can collect or curate the pins of other people. Um, and you organize either your pins or other people's pins onto boards. So they're organized into categories and you can make um, the categories anything that you would like to be. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you might want to focus those categories uh, for business use. You know, I think you need to, um, uh, Cynthia, you, I think you need to advance your slide because we don't, oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> okay, okay, I think there's a little bit of a delay there. Oh, okay. So uh, this is what your, um, your main account page would look like. Um, so you have a little bit of space to, to name your account um, and a place to describe your account and you're going to want to make sure that you use keywords here. And keywords are important anywhere on Pinterest um, that you can put text in because it's still searched by text keywords. Um, as much as it is a visual based platform, we don't have the technology yet to recognize a, a picture of a person versus a picture of a dog yet. So you have to make sure that you use those keywords wherever you possibly can. Um, as far as the business side of things, which I think most of the people on this call are really interested in, you're going to have to go to business.pinterest.com to launch your account there or to convert your existing personal account. Um, I started my account before the business accounts even existed so it had to be converted and it's really easy to do a button uh, filling in of a couple of boxes you don't lose any of your followers you don't lose any of the traction that you've already built up on Pinterest so um, easy to do but also even if you already have the account I recommend that you go to this page frequently because they change it they've actually just started uh, a business blog so you'll want to check that out too because it gives tips and advice directed just towards the business users of Pinterest. Um, also check out right here if you can see the success stories that I have circled because it'll tell you what the big brands are doing, those guys with the big budgets and how they're approaching Pinterest, their goals, what results they've seen and you can get a lot of ideas from the people that are already finding success and maybe you can you know kind of mimic what the big guys are doing you know and find success for yourself or for your clients. Um, the thing that really makes Pinterest powerful is 80% of all the pins are repinned. So that means pins or images shared between people and those pins link back out to the site. So if I pin something from my site, a, a blog post I wrote um, or something I brought in from another website and I pinned it to one of my boards, that pin, that image and that link will live on my board for a really long time until you know Pinterest goes away or I decide to delete it. Um, and when people come to my account and they find me through pins that I pin because our pins do show up on a public feed where people can see, um, they can then go back to my boards and discover other things that I've pinned that relate to that category. So something that I pinned a year ago, actually this happened just today, something, a, a 
blog post I wrote a year ago when I first started the blog has been repinned so it's gotten new life so that image that link has gotten new traction through Pinterest now if you get lucky and somebody with a really big following repins your content that goes back to your site or to your client site then that could you know stimulate new traffic all over again um, if they have a really big following and then those people then repin it so the repins are really really important and can really help you grow your traffic which can then lead to sale conversion you know and um, and leads and just to kind of give a visual rest representation of all this, so here in the center is that original pin, but if somebody over here finds it and then they repin it, then that person can find it and it goes off into that circle and, and so on and so forth. So you can see that it really can spread quickly and be really powerful in bringing traffic back to your site. And that's why you know, marketers and, and business owners have really taken notice of Pinterest because of that referral traffic. Come on. As an example, um, uh, this is a blogger um, named Kate. Um, she's from all the Small Things blog, and um, she started her blog about kind of. She's a hairstylist, and she decided she was going to help her clients give, you know, with their hairstyling tips and tricks and what she does and how she does it because once they left her salon, they were kind of stuck. How do they recreate that style, that type of thing? Um, and when she started using Pinterest, boy did things change for her. Her pins just went crazy nuts viral. They were shared millions and millions and millions of times. And as you can see, this isn't, you know, ready for the cover of Vogue or anything or any other fashion or, or style magazine. It's it's a great picture, but it doesn't have to be, you know, really, really highly, you know, produced or, or you know, have a lot of, you know, that high-end photography type of stuff that you you know you really think needs to be successful it just doesn't now she gets millions and millions of page views to her site each month from Pinterest from that that has led to product endorsement deals that she has been flown around the country to go and speak at places she even got featured in real simple magazine um, she got you know a whole section there, an article about her tips and what she does for hairstyle and keeping things simple so you know it could really lead to bigger and better things um, as far as local businesses go Google and Pinterest have a great relationship Google likes to index Pinterest pins and Pinterest boards um, before I did a Google search for coffee humor I had never heard of Silverbridge Coffee Company and I am a coffee fanatic I love coffee couldn't live without it and when I did you know I was pinning some things on Pinterest about coffee humor it's like well let me see what else I can find what's related to coffee humor on Google and bring in some new content um, and first result on Pinterest ranking number one on top is Silver Bridge's coffee, Silver Bridge Coffee Company's Pinterest um, coffee humor board. So through that, I was able to go to their board. I clicked on that, and that took me to their board, and I found lots of things related to coffee humor. But then I also saw that they have, here's their account name up in their Pinterest account, and I clicked on that, and I saw that they had their online site. From there, I was able to order coffee. They had coffee mugs and all these other things. I learned about their company. If it hadn't been from Pinterest, I would have never learned about them. So even though, you know, you, things may not be huge for you on Pinterest quite yet. Remember that Google is indexing things. Another reason that you need to watch out for those keywords, whether they be in your board description or your account name or your pins. Ooh, there was a loud noise. Um, so if you'll notice here, coffee humor is the name of the board. It's also coffee is used within the description, and coffee and humor are repeated many times throughout the pins that they have on their boards. Okay. Scroll down here a bit. So when it comes to Pinterest, as always as it is on other places online, content is king. You want to really be careful with what you pin and where you're pinning it from. Um, and you want to really develop a strategy as far as what you're going to be pinning and who you want to target. So let's say I have a coffee shop. We'll take the coffee shop route. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to start a board that's dedicated to weddings or cute kittens. We know weddings and cute kittens are really popular online. We know weddings are really, really popular on Pinterest, but that really doesn't correlate with my coffee shop. Sure, brides drink coffee too, but that's not what they're looking for when they go to Pinterest, you know, or when they go 
you know, it's just not really going to mesh really, really well because you'll have your, your wedding board and it's going to have all these wedding terms. And then when they find your account, they probably are not going to likely to click through because it doesn't have to do with what they're looking for. So keep it relevant. Um, we already talked about keywords a lot. I cannot emphasize how important they are. Um, and really, when it comes to bringing that traffic back to you, sure, Silverbridge Coffee Company got my attention because of their coffee humor board, but what would really work for them in that situation or anybody else on Pinterest is to make sure you have you pin content on a regular basis that comes from your site. Now, you don't want to just repin the image of the one product you have over and over and over again. Every now and then, sure, is fine just to kind of, you know, send a nice little reminder out that you have this awesome product or offer this awesome service, but you don't want to just make your Pinterest account nothing but a huge ad to self-promote. That's not going to really, that's not going to bring in followers. I know I wouldn't like to follow an account that's just going to show the same image over and over again. Um, but if you do only have one product, that doesn't mean that you have to be really limited on what you can pin. You can pin other companies, other businesses pins within Pinterest and not have to worry about all that copyright stuff. I know when Pinterest was really gaining traction, one of the things that was a concern is all the copyright um, concerns, I guess. And within Pinterest terms of service, if you open up a business account on Pinterest and you pin content from your site, you are then giving permission for that content to be shared within Pinterest. So if you see, let's say, if for that one coffee company, if Starbucks had a great image of a, of a you know, a latte or a cappuccino or, or something, and they wanted to bring it into their Pinterest account within Pinterest Terms of Service, that's okay. And that would be really good for their community because that would bring them other types of images and things that they're really interested in. Um, and that would fill their boards with related content. Um, so it would it all just be self-promotional. And here we go. As far as the place where you really want to, to put those keywords is the description. And you have 500 characters under the description to use. Now, I wouldn't recommend including the whole 500 characters or, or you know filling it completely up. You're going to want to keep it short, simple, sweet, to the point, but be sure you are descriptive. Um, Pinterest is really trying to position themselves as a form of a search tool. They're really not, they're saying that they're not wanting to compete with Facebook or Twitter. They are considering themselves something completely different and more in lines of a Google type tool. Um, they don't call their main feed or your homepage feed a feed. They call it the interest graph. Um, so they're really wanting it to be more of a search tool. And the way that your content and your pins or your client's pins can be found is through the places where you can use keywords. Another thing that you want to keep notice of is the URL, which you know we want to make sure that we want to include those keywords when we name our blog posts or those types of things. Um, but it also plays a role in Pinterest. Sometimes if you do a search for a particular type of subject, um, you know, if I did a search for social media, sometimes I will get pins that result without the word social media in the description. And the reason that they resulted is because social media was used somewhere in the link associated with that image. Um, so if you can use them in both places, that might double your chances of getting you know, shown in the results. I wish I could tell you exactly how you get shown in the results. Um, even on the popular page, sometimes you'll get pins that have been pin, repinned one or two times and then right next to it, one that has been repinned 25 times. So it's really still kind of a mystery to tell how things rank within Pinterest. But, you know, those keywords are really, really important. Okay, let's move on to images a little bit. Now, when it comes to images that you bring from your site, when you're using them on blog posts, if you do have a blog, which I highly recommend as a way to really keep that content fresh and to bring in new content onto Pinterest to share, um, size matters, and it matters so much. As you can see, this teeny tiny little picture, it's hard to tell what it is, right? Um, and that's because the image that it links to on the site is just a teeny tiny little thumbnail picture so you can't tell what it is. So you want to use bigger images. Um, sometimes they do tend to stand out a little bit depending on the the layout of your blog or that type of thing. But if you really want to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to images, make them bigger. It doesn't really cost you anymore to make them bigger. Um, so if you can, try to, to, to do 
things within a, a good size that would show up on Pinterest. Um, the next slide will really illustrate that. Everybody gets the same width on Pinterest. Um, all the images will kind of expand and here you can see that teeny tiny little picture. It does blow up a little bit on the feed page or within your boards or that type of thing, but it's still really small. What about this one down here? If you make them tall and colorful with a with a kind of a light background or a really dark background, some really high contrast, that'll make that image pop. If you take a look on this page, you know, this one over here with the red kind of background stands out a little bit. Really tall and colorful will get much more attention and be more noticeable while people are just scanning through Pinterest, because remember people scan and don't study. Um, you know, it'll give you more of a chance than if you had something kind of small and, and monochromatic. As far as when you should be pinning or timing your pinning, really it's going to take a little bit of time to really figure out your audience. For me, in pinning social media content, I find that during the day, during the business hours, things really seem to get repinned when I'm sharing social media type related stuff. Um, if I tend to share that content in the evenings, I don't get as much repinning from that. Um, if you pin for other reasons, let's say for you know the coffee shop again, your your pinning times may vary. So you might want to just kind of do a little bit of experimenting, do a little bit of watching. And as far as growing your following or your clients following on Pinterest, you're going to want to also space out your pinning throughout the day just to kind of grab a few people. You don't want to have marathon pinning sessions. For example, I wouldn't want to, you know, for a client, I wouldn't want to get up in the morning and pin 20 things at 10 o'clock in the morning and ignore the account the rest of the day because um, that would mean only people active on Pinterest at that time at 10 o'clock in the morning would really see all that I had to bring you know to my account and a little bit it's kind of like Facebook and Twitter that way that you can't you could look back um, but it would be better if you spread your content throughout the day um, it doesn't have to take a long time um, you know to pin things it only takes you know couple of seconds to just click pin it, you know, if it's coming from a website, especially if it's coming from yours. Um, you know, quick description, just two or three in the morning, a few in the afternoon, you know, and you'll get to see with what your your, your target market is when they're most active. Um, really overall, the most active times on Pinterest are in the evenings and Sundays. Sundays seem to be really, really just popular because I think that's when, you know, people have downtime. They're kind of wanting just to kind of you know, relax a little and Pinterest is definitely a way to just kind of to skim and to see what interests you, you know, so so keep that in mind with your pinning. Now as far as your accounts go, you want to make sure that you only pin reliable things. Now this is where it does take a second or two to click through your pin. So if you're on Pinterest and you have something you want to repin and share on your account to your followers, take that extra second and click through and make sure it goes back to the to the original source of the image. Sometimes you will see a URL where it came from, but that may not be the original source. People are finding and those not so nice people are recommending that you're taking the popular images from Pinterest and then putting them on your own on you know a different site, um, which would then link to Pinterest or even changing the URL. There's all these things that could happen that could maybe be misleading or misguiding. So take a second, click through, and make sure that it goes somewhere reliable. Now there's a few follower or a few people that I follow that I know that they are very reliable. I know I can count on their pins to go to you know the site where it came from to give me good reliable content. Um, so you know try to be that for the other people on Pinterest so you can kind of build that trust and you know that or they know that you'll be pinning good things. And show your some personality, you know, change up the the types of things that you pin or, or be, you know, just try to have some fun within your descriptions, um, the way you see or perceive that, you know, that pin. So just don't repin somebody's description. Add your twist or your thoughts to it. Sure, that picture of that sunset is beautiful, but how does that relate to to your company? So let's say you have kind of an outdoorsy fitness type of thing and you have that sunset. Well, right now we're getting close to Father's Day. Well, you could say, well, wouldn't this be great to take a hike with our father, you know, at this time or at this location or something like that. So, you know, add a little bit of fun into it, make it really relatable to your, your business, your message, that type of thing. Now here we get to the serious part. We, let's talk about money a little bit. Now this is a fun fact that I found um, according to a study done by Rich Relevance where they looked at 700 million shopping sessions. That is a lot of 
shopping. Um, on, on average, Pinterest shoppers spend $170, which is nearly double what you see on the other sites. So all of this traffic, all of these types of you know, things that we've been talking about really could pay off. We saw how they paid off for Kate, for Silverbridge Coffee Company. You know, they got another customer because I found them on Pinterest that I would have never found them any other place else um, unless I had that, you know, kind of need to go look for more Pinterest, I mean, for more coffee humor to share on Pinterest. So it all kind of ties together. All right, here we go. And that's all I have for today. Just a brief introduction to, to some ways that Pinterest could really help your business. Um, and next time when I come back next week, we're going to be talking more about analytics to really measure how, how that traffic from Pinterest is really benefiting you. Well, thank you very much. Can we see you again? Uh, here we go. Let's all see. All right. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank great you. Presentation, great slides, and I have a number of questions. First okay. of all, a, a comment, and thank you for mentioning those cute kittens. <laughs> <laughs> They're adorable, but you know, we just don't need to see them everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, now, I have a question. You know, every there's been some exciting news, which I was excited with Facebook. They gave us hashtags, and hashtags are on LinkedIn and Twitter, um, Google, Google Plus, but Pinterest took them away. Do you know why that is? They are still on Pinterest, but really they don't function in the same way that they do on those other platforms. So if you put a hashtag within your pin description and you go back or you find a hashtag, you can click it and all it works as right now is a shortcut to do a search. So let's say, let's go back to coffee. So if I put something hashtag coffee, I could click coffee, then all the pins that they thought relevant to show me at that time with coffee in the description or in the URL like we talked about before would show up. Some of them would have hashtags, some of them wouldn't. Um, so, And I found I've done a little bit of experimenting where I created a, a unique hashtag um, on a couple of pins and it never got indexed. It never showed up. Um, but I also am follow um, a couple of ladies who do a live chat event on Pinterest every Wednesday and they've created a uni unique hashtag for their chat event and you can click on that hashtag and it's called pin up live and it's all one word together and when I click on it I can find all of their pins coming up so I'm not sure if it's a matter of how many times you use that unique hashtag I noticed a lot of bigger brands have stopped using or really aren't using that as a way to to do their contest. It used to be, you know, last year that when you were running a contest, you would use a, a hashtag within the pin description as part of the entry process. It doesn't uh -huh. seem to be as, as predominant anymore. Um, and contests have really slowed down just a little bit on Pinterest because the, the way that they want them to be run and, um, you know, they don't want it to be a popularity thing. They want more engagement and creativity is the way Pinterest is really wanting oh, contests to be oh. done, you know. Yeah, okay. so I know it's a long-winded question about hashtags, but yeah, they're they're there, but not, you know. Okay, but so uh, uh, that brings me to the next question I had, which is, let's say um, you said that Pinterest wants to position themselves as a search engine for uh, for images. So, what is the best way to search on Pinterest? Let's say if you're looking for a community, how do communities form in Pinterest? Well, I think you're kind of talking about group boards. Um, is that what you mean? No, in general, when you're, let's say you're a marketer and you're trying to develop a strategy for somebody and you want to do your search because we all start with search. What is the best way to search for people interested in a particular topic on Pinterest? Okay, um, and that way I would do whatever kind of keyword phrase that you want associated with that community. Um, I just recently interviewed a lady on the podcast who has her birthday, her son's birthday is on Christmas Day. Oh. And it's like, well, then he kind of misses out on his birthday. So what she's decided to do for him is do a half birthday. So every June, that's when his birthday party is. He uh -huh. has his birthday party with his friends 
in June to have celebrate his half, not his whole birthday in December, which he just does, you know, I guess gets incorporated into their holiday celebration. Um, so she did a search within Pinterest for half birthday, and she did a search for pins and for boards. So there's a lot of boards. Apparently, there's a community of people who also do half birthdays, and they've created boards with half birthday ideas. Wow. So now she's met other people who have that similar interest, which is what really the basis or what they're really wanting Pinterest to be, to really share those, those interests and to discover new things. Okay, so then... Uh... The, the most important now, which brings me to the flip side of the question, the best way to be found on Pinterest, to make sure you put those keywords in, your, in the description of the board, description of the images. Is that, am I right? Everywhere and anywhere you can include those keywords without appearing spammy. Um, yeah, and when it comes to naming your boards, you, you don't have a lot of space, but you want, and you'd want to show a little bit of creativity, but you want to also include the searchable words. So, like, let's take my recipe board, for example. Um, I put it recipes that make me say yum. So, it's not just recipes, but it also says something a little bit more. But I wanted to make sure that word recipes was included because people will search for recipe ideas, recipe for this, recipe for that. Um, and I could get more specific. I could say, you know, chicken recipes or, you know, dessert recipes or, or something like that just mm -hmm. to make it more specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think you and I can just talk and uh, have another workshop just on search. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I think that's going to be one of the most valuable parts of Pinterest, knowing how to search because I'm, I imagine that people would search different, do you think people would search differently on Google compared or in search engines in general compared to Pinterest? Do you, from your I, experience or what's your gut feeling, is the behavior different? Yes, actually, I've just, you know, kind of been talking about this in, in a couple of groups I'm involved in, and people are now, and I, I thought it was just me because I'm so in love with Pinterest, uh -huh. is I go to Pinterest first before I go to Google, because I know I will find the how-tos, the where-tos, the why-tos, uh -huh. and not just the technical articles or the people or, or the things that rank well in Google because they have a huge advertising budget or because they're well-known brands. Sometimes I can get more valuable information from a small blogger than I can from, you know, a huge, you know, fashion company or, or you know, food point. or that, food network. That is such a fantastic point. I'm yeah, glad. so I, I, I've heard multiple people say, yeah, I go to Pinterest first, you know, especially when it comes to shopping, when it comes to buying things. Because, you know, people have read you know, black patent leather shoes in the place you can buy them from. If you search black patent leather shoes, you're going to get Amazon, you're going to get eBay, you're going to get the big places, you know, that type of stuff if you can't, you know, if you, if you search for it on Google. Um, so it, it, it really is for a lot of people becoming their first go-to search. Uh -huh. Okay, that's interesting. Wow. Um, let me see, I have some other questions and then I'll ask uh, our audience if they have a question. Um, let's see, the last one is, uh, is, have is your recommendations for tools for Pinterest. Tools. Um, there's a couple that I really like right now that I'm using a lot. Pin League, which is an analytics service. Um, Pinterest does have their own analytics within, which we're going to talk more about next week, and we'll get a little bit further into this, um, their own analytics. But it's it's pretty basic. It's pretty limited as far as this, the time you can see, and it doesn't really tell you a lot about the people who are repinning and refollowing you. Oh, okay. um, without what you can, but you have to do a little bit of digging. You have to, you know, it takes a little bit more effort. Pin League offers a free service. It costs you one dollar to sign up, and it's worth every oh, dollar. Wow. Okay. Yeah, a whole dollar. Yeah, <laughs> you know, even I can do that. I can. And I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a mom of four. I got to be frugal, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it tells you uh, about the people who are repinning you, how many followers they have. So let's say um, I have a follower who has a million followers, 100,000 followers, 50,000 followers. Those are really pe people with a really far reach on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So I might want to say, oh, you know, her or him over there, they really have a big following. We're, you know, they're, they're, 
followers would more than likely be interested in the things I have to share. Maybe I should go and repin some of their stuff. I should go and comment on that pins, just like we do on other social platforms. Yep. Reach out to them, give them a little bit of attention, be nice, you know, be genuine. You know, you don't want to just reach out to to anybody or the the people with you know a million plus followers. There's people out there with three million followers if they have nothing to do with you know who you're trying to reach or, or what you're mm -hmm. accomplished. Yeah. Um. So League will tell you that. It'll tell you, kind of give you a, a time graph of what you've uh, or when the best times are you to to pin when you're most active. So you can kind of track those types of things. That's nice. That's very. Nice. Um, Another tool I'm really liking right now is called ShotPin, S-H-O-T-P-I-N, uh -huh. um, and that's a Chrome extension kind of tool. And what it does a lot of times, especially when we're talking about business articles or, or marketing or social media, um, a lot of those types of places are still kind of lacking in those big pinnable images or any images at all. Mm -hmm. um, and you can take a screenshot and download this screenshot, then upload the screenshot and add the link and go through all that process to, to, to upload any image to Pinterest. But this tool allows you to take a quick little screenshot, click a button, and it already makes the link. It already sends it all to your Pinterest account. You add the description. It's just really, really easy to use for those types of sites that don't have the strong pinnable images. Oh, I see. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. I have a question here, and Marilyn is asking, on Pinterest, should we only have boards relating to our businesses, or can we have other interests as well? That kind of takes us back to the fuzzy kitten thing. <laughs> you want to relate them to the lifestyle of your target market that relates to your business. So... Um, Let's say you are a shoe shop or shoe store or a shoe blogger. You'd like to, your focus is shoes. Sure, you can talk about other accessories. You can talk about other things that have to go with fashion. You may even talk a little bit about, maybe a little bit about fitness and diet and keeping, you know, that, you know, swim. You can oh, kind of push the envelope a little bit. But if you're all about fashion and shoes and style and that type of thing, you really the you could have the fuzzy kitten in there but where does it really fit mm -hmm. um, unless you could relate it is to a fuzzy kitten being stylish or you know having some style or bringing in the cat lifestyle to the fashionista you know you can you can get creative with it that way but you do want to keep them pretty relevant to the lifestyle um, I interviewed a, a a psychologist recently who's an author um, and she uses Pinterest to promote her book and her practice and that type of thing um, and she has no food or recipe boards because that's not the focus of her mm -hmm. business that's not the focus of her audience she wants to promote positive thinking and mental health wellness um, you know but she's not addressing the food aspect of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anybody else if you have a question please raise your hand Scott do you have a question no <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we don't hear you, Scott. You need to unmute yourself. I have another question. So, if you have a different page, can you change oh, it to a different it, page? Marilyn, can you type your question? Because there is this sound coming from behind your screen. Okay, Scott, can you? Oh boy, somebody's making a lot of... Okay, Scott, if you could type your question as well, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Oh boy. David, do you have a question? No? Okay. All right, I nobody's typing. Was Scott was Scott trying to raise his hand? I couldn't. Tell. Okay, okay. Since I have a business page, how do I change it to be more relevant? Okay, if you've started off with, let's say, more of a personal account or, or that type of thing, what I would really, what I recommend doing for anybody, no matter what types of boards that you have on your account already, is to move the most relevant boards up to the top. Um, so let's say we'll go back to the coffee shop. They're going to want to put the board about their coffee shop first, then maybe the coffee humor, then maybe coffee 
brewing practices or whatever, all those things have to do about coffee. But if in the past they had started boards about, let's say, movies um, that really isn't related to their, to their target market or to their content, they can move that board to the bottom. Uh, for me, I have a business and it's all about Pinterest and about social media and that type of things. But I started my account as a personal account because there wasn't a difference. I started it, even the blog from a personal perspective. So I do have a lot of personal type things. And for me, I am, I am the brand. I am oh so Pinteresting. So I do have a lot of personal stuff that isn't related to that, but I bump that down to the bottom because that's not the focus. That's not what I'm wanting to draw attraction to. And depending on the screen resolution, whether you're looking at a, uh, your Pinterest account on, you know, desktop monitor or on a mobile phone or on a tablet, those first few boards will show up first, no matter which screen you're looking at. So those first three or four boards are really the ones you really want to, to nurture, take care of, and just put in the spotlight. Okay, thank you. Marika is asking, where did the dollar, oh, okay. There used to be a dollar banner that would display across the picture as soon as you typing a dollar sign and amount. Where did the dollar sign appear and why? Did that show up um, on the, the image um, that was that would go into the gifts category? Um, there's a gifts category on Pinterest, and you could divide it up by dollar amounts, and that would help. Now, with all the changes of Pinterest, it, some have found that it's gone away, and I'm not sure when or where or if it'll come back. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, but they have started to add things called rich pins. Um, which gives you more information about the product. Right now they're for products, for recipes, and for movies. So for products it would give you the price, whether it's in stock, and where you could buy it from. So I think they're, maybe they're making the transition more to that. Um, the movies, it tells you kind of the, the background, the cast, the crew, that type of thing. Um, and recipes, it tells you the ingredients, how many it serves, that type of information. So that may be why we're seeing you know, kind of that transition type right now with the, the prices showing up. I see. Okay. Um, we have lots of questions for you. <laughs> Great. How hard, how hard it is for someone who is new to Pinterest to establish themselves if they are starting from scratch? All right. Um, now, I wish I had the magic button that would get you a million followers overnight. <laughs> um, but just like with every other social network, it, or you know, even though this isn't technically a social network, it's going to take time and it's going to take participation. It's going to take you being found in the search and you know, creating those boards with keywords and pins with keywords. It's going to take you know, some effort. It's not going to happen overnight, but it seems that once you start getting that traction, once you start building up, it seems to kind of have a snowball effect. Um, the people that do have the million plus followers, they said, once I got past, you know, the first thousand, it got faster. Once I got past the second, whatever. I mean, it seems like those first 50 are hard to find, but what I would really recommend you doing, if you have a presence on another platform, let's say if you're really strong on Facebook or Twitter, um, let people over there know. Say, hey, I've just you know started this Pinterest account. I'm going to be pinning things related to whatever, and give them the link to your Pinterest account. Um, so that way, people that follow you on Facebook that are also in love with Pinterest, like I am, would go check you out on Pinterest. Um, and start following you. But let them know that you're there, what you're going to be pinning. You can also share your pins to your um, Twitter account. You can't share your pins to a Facebook page yet directly. You can put the link and you know upload a picture to, to your business page. Um, right now, Pinterest is only connected with personal accounts. But you could do some of that cross-promotion. Um, also, pinning regularly throughout the day, multiple days a week, will grow your account much faster. For a while there, I was like, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are my Pinterest days, Tuesday, Thursday, Twitter, Facebook, trying to, you know, of course, do the juggle like we all have to do with all the different networks. Um, and that wasn't really working out. I was, ga I was gaining followers, but not that much. I talked to a woman who had over a million followers. It's like, okay, you got to tell me, how did you get to a million followers? And her advice is like, be there all the time. Be there as much as you can. Um, and I took her advice, and I did what I just told you to do a little while ago, pin a few in the morning, few in the afternoon, few in the evening, and also scatter them around. Don't only just pin. I don't only pin to the social media boards. I kind of vary up the content. Sometimes I get on Pinterest, and I see that people are on a chocolate brownie kick or the cute fuzzy kitten kick, and I see, you know, 50 images of cute fuzzy kittens. They're adorable, but that isn't really helpful. So kind of vary up where you're pinning, your times, and that will really grow your, your following. 
Okay, now David is asking, oh, he left, but we can answer his questions. Is I'm trying okay. to understand how to best use Pinterest for a small biz David foundation, and his this conceptual information has been helpful. Thank you, Cynthia and Sherry. Oh, that's a comment, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm not sure what his... his, his uh... The site is about, so I, I think I need a little bit more information about how he could use it. Okay. After Sunday, Bob uh, says, after Sunday, is there any other day which you find affords a higher pin visibility? Um, evening times, and usually later in the week, like Thursday. Sometimes Friday, Wednesday, Thursday in the evening seem to be a little bit better. Um, but like I said, it really depends on depends on your market. Like I said, when I am pinning about social media stuff, those pins do much better during the day, during the week, because we have other social media consultants or strategists or whatever title we're calling ourselves um, on Pinterest to learn about that, online to learn about that, and to, to really develop the professional side. So it really depends on when who you're trying to reach, but overall, in general, Sunday is the best day. Okay. So far, right now, you know, that could change as well. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions? I see a question from Karen. Um, Here. How do you move oh, the, yes. the boards now with the new Pinterest? Um, and the old Pinterest, Pinterest to go you know, under revamp, like we mentioned, um, there used to be a little film strip looking thing at the top that you would click to move the boards. Now, just to move the boards, you click on the board cover, the main picture of the board, um, and you hold it down and then just drag it. And it's a little bit clunky, and you kind of have to drag it a row or two up, then stop. Scroll up, drag it a row or two up, and then stop. Um, but that's how you can move it. You can even move it on an iPad in that same way, too. It's just a, if you're in the, the browser and looking at Pinterest that way, not in the app. Okay. And everybody is thanking you, Cynthia. Wow. <laughs> we oh, learned so pleasure. much today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, so if nobody has any, let's see, yes, thank you, thank you, everybody's saying thank you. Thank uh, you, thank you. <laughs> Please, if you have any more questions, come on by and ask. Yeah, you know where people can, I mean, there was something on your slide, but where is the best place for people to find you? Sure, oh, so Pinteresting.com. I have contact forums and comment sections all over the place, so just anywhere there, um, leave me the comment or the question, I will get back to you. Okay, now if there are no more questions, we're going to move on to the next segment of our show, uh, which is sharing exciting news about social media and what it means for you. But first of all, I want to thank Cynthia again. Uh, this was a fantastic presentation, and I'm looking forward to learning more from you next week. My pleasure. We'll have lots of fun stuff to talk about next week. So don't go anywhere. We're still going to talk about some social media news. Uh, I'm really excited, excited about it. Some of the things that I've been wishing for and finally they gave it to us. So um, let's see what's going on in social media. Okay, so there is some exciting news in social media. Let's find out what it means for us. Is everybody seeing it? Okay. Okay, so Twitter finally gives us analytics. Um, it used to be that only people that bought ads on Twitter could get access to those analytics, but now it's open to everyone, and the way to view it is to go to this URL, www.ads.twitter.com, and log in with your usual Twitter login. So when you log in, you go to this home page, which is basically the ad platform, the home page for Twitter's ad platform. And uh, it basically is encouraging you to establish and um, start an ad. So how do you get your analytics? You notice that up here there is a analytics menu button and when you click on it, it doesn't really immediately take you anywhere. You have to choose between two different things, either timeline, activity, and followers. So let's see what it shows us when we choose them. So. This would be, if you click on the timeline activity, this will take you to the home page. And something that is absolutely fantastic, a couple of things, is that first of all, it gives you a visual representation of how many times you've been mentioned and the number of uh, people that, the pattern in which within the past month, it seems like it is in a monthly basis. 
um, how many people have followed you and unfollowed you and the, uh, it gives you statistics on the bottom here for your individual posts and also it allows you to download the data which is which is a great um, option to have. So let's dig a little bit more on these different parts of the thing. Um, so let's take a look more at the top of this page, which is mentions, follows, unfollows, which is in uh, six hour increments. And because I'm in Pacific time, it's giving it to me in Pacific time. So I don't know, maybe it's, it's because Twitter is in Pacific time. I'm not sure about that. So on the top, it shows you on uh, each day how many, I guess in six hour increments, how many times you've been mentioned and it seems like, and if you take your mouse and hover over that particular data point, it, um, a window opens and gives you more detailed information. So on May 17th, it seemed to, I seem to have been very popular. Um, so uh, what I can do is that I can go back to my timeline, to my status updates on May 17th and see what it is that I've done that people liked so much. Um, and then you can uh, look at your followers and unfollowers and it's interesting that there's so much unfollowing going on um, in addition to following but I guess the important point is that the net result would be follow. So you increase your followers, that's all that counts. Um, and it's interesting to see that some days I was some I did something maybe people didn't like me very much <laughs> and then on some days not so much and I had more followers but personally I don't think it really means that much and a lot of this unfollowing I feel has to do with the automated way that people search for keywords and automatically follow them then they go back and say oh not, that's not really the person I wanted to follow so I don't really think I don't take this as much um, to mean anything. So then we go to the bottom side and if you see that for your individual post statistics you have three different options all good and best and let's see what it means. <clears throat> so when you click the all option it basically tells you how do your followers like your post so that's all of the posts you've had within a matter of the month. It uh, <clears throat> It's chronological, so your most recent post is at the top and tells you whether how many people favorited, retweeted, or replied to you. Then how do your followers like your post? Recent tweets in the good category and uh, what are the criteria? The top two-thirds of tweets with some engagement. So um, I have these in, within the past month. One of the posts that I... Uh, that I put out there it was retweeted twice and it's getting and it's interesting for your most popular tweets it gives you the extent by which compared to your usual tweets how successful that particular post has been so this particular post uh, that I shared by Anita Powell she's talking about how to do a self selfless self-promotion um, it had 20, 20 times 27 times normal reach compared to my usual post. So this is this is great because you can go on a monthly basis, go through your the stats for your status updates and see what it is that your followers like the most. Then you go to the best, which is the top two thirds of tweets with some engagement or no, actually it's the top 15%. Yeah, the top 15%. Um, and really uh, between my good statistics and, and best statistics I didn't really find any difference. Another uh, really good uh, data that it gives you that is really important is how many people have clicked on the particular link that you have shared. This is a very very important um, information to have so just because somebody uh, retweets a status update or favorites it or uh, whether and just because it has a lot of reach doesn't mean that you have really um, influenced people to make that final action and that final action on Twitter that is really important is that click that takes you to a property outside of Twitter so um, this is another exciting news now uh, as I went through this I sort of had some questions about what is the time span for the data 
for the followers, you get a screenshot when you look at the, uh, I don't have a screenshot up here, when you look at, it also gives you data for your followers, and then it gives you a screenshot of how the number of followers are accumulating. So it seems like it starts from the time you started your account until today. Uh, it's like a graph. So, but the post analytics seems like it's only for the past month. So if I were to make a wish, it would be the, for uh, Twitter to give us the ability to choose a period of time to analyze it. But overall, this is exciting uh, news to get the analytics from the horse's mouth. And the question is, are analytics tools in trouble? I don't really think so because some analytic tools actually give you more data than this Twitter tool does, Twitter analytic does, and some of them give you really nice um, graphic representations of your activities, give, they give you more statistics about your followers and the people that uh, you follow. Okay, so the next great news is with Facebook. This is something that I've been wishing Facebook would give us, and finally they give us hashtags. Why is this hashtag important? <laughs> well, it gives you a number of options. First of all, it allows you to search for particular keywords and see how people use those keywords in a status update. So there are two ways that we search data. Um, there are keywords that is relevant to how people search for stuff on Google, and it's important for finding websites and a lot of different web properties. But if you're going to um, search for something on social networks where this, the search is based on status updates, the way people express themselves and the way they use phrases, it might be different in Facebook than, it, than, um, than what you would find in a, on a website. Um, so you, if you're going to look for particular conversations and communities and people that have a particular interest in there, you want to be uh, make sure that first of all, search for um, keywords and the way people express themselves in those uh, status updates. And also, you want to, um, if you want to be found, you can fashion the way you put your status updates such that people can find you. So it's really, really important. It also allows you to search for and participate in conversations about a particular topic. So basically, you, find, uh, you can find people that like the same thing as you do. Uh, basically, uh, what it does, it uh, helps you create a deeper, um, it gives you a deeper interaction and networking experience. Um, it also allows you to research and find target communities that you're looking for. And uh, another thing that it does, it gives Facebook posts a particular context, which is really important. So um, my question, one of the questions that came to my mind was that, what is the difference between a keyword search with or without a hashtag? And when I sort of searched for it, I found something a status update this if you're interested and you want to get information about the hashtag for Facebook I suggest that you like this Facebook page um, I'm guessing this has been established by Facebook itself um, so what do they say here it says why do some interests have a hashtag next to them when something is marked with a hashtag it will also help you reach everyone who has expressed interests closely related to the term for example, hashtag cooking lets you reach people who are also interested in cooking, cooking tips, and cooking and eating. So if you go search Facebook for a term, for a keyword, and you put a hashtag next to it, your search becomes more broad. Um, and you can find uh, terms that are relevant to your keyword and not only that specific keyword. But when a topic doesn't have a hashtag, it's a precise interest. This means you'll only reach people who have expressed an interest in this specific topic. For example, cooking with no hashtag includes only people with an interest in cooking. So it's more laser focused. It's not, it doesn't uh, have the breadth of searching with a hashtag. So basically hashtags help broaden your search to related terms. So I did a test with that. I searched for cooking, 
and the stuff that came out had the word cooking either in the name of the Facebook page or whatever presence was there or um, in the description of the page and of course it also takes you to the pages and the people with that name. Someone's typing, can you please mute yourself? Then when you um, search with the hashtag cooking that it brings a whole different set of information um, as a result of the search. So there are people that use the hashtag cooking in their updates and a whole bunch of other uh, status updates. So the, the result that you get is going to di be different for your search on Facebook depending on whether or not you use hashtag. You want to keep that in mind. So the next question is what about privacy and the fabulous Mari Smith who's always on top of things. She had a status update last night so I took a screenshot of it. So um, I will read it for you. Basically lots of confusion flying around um, about hashtag and privacy. This brand new feature is rolling out to all users. So what is the scope? Hashtags work on personal profiles, fan pages, and comments. Now as of yesterday, I, my, the hashtags that I put on my uh, Facebook business page wasn't clickable. It wasn't a link, but maybe it's going to be rolling out soon. As with all personal profile features on Facebook, privacy settings prevail. If you publish a post on your profile to friends only and the post contains a hashtag, yes, the hashtag will be clickable and open up to display all other posts on Facebook containing that hashtag. Um, but only friends can see friends only posts that show up in hashtag searches. So on Facebook, unless you publish something to public then those searches uh, will not necessarily bring it out bring that status updates when someone searches for that term so no worries there um, so public posts with or without hashtags are public as you know then friends only posts with or without hashtags are just that private and visible to friends only even when friends include hashtags in comments on your friends only thread, your post is still private and visible to just your friends. So don't worry about someone going to your post and leave a comment and put a hashtag in the comment. That doesn't automatically make your private status update searchable. And so no, that sort of should put some minds at ease. And individual comments on threads do not surface in hashtag searches, just posts show in searches. So I think that that's just a, was a fantastic status update, which is typical of Mary Smarty Smith. Okay, so now we move to Google Plus, uh, and Google Plus business pages uh, get a really nice goodie from Google, which is a dashboard. And basically, their dash, their Google Plus pages on their dashboard look something like this. You have the data about your um, page and the image. And you can start a chat directly with your followers. You can set up a, um, send a post, write a post and share it. You get insights on how your Facebook, uh, sorry, on your Google Plus page is behaving. And then there is a place we can, you can check on the ads that you have. You can put the information, local information for your business in this section on the left hand side. It's basically cards, uh, index cards, such that when people search for your business on Google, they can find it. And then another interesting thing is keywords that are related to your page um, and how well they perform. So th this is really interesting because it helps you fashion your uh, status updates uh, using the most popular keywords. Uh, so basically um, Google Plus is bringing all the different tools that it gives to business owners into this one Google Plus page um, dashboard. This is the Google Plus page insights look like so you can see how many views your page, uh, page posts have had how many different kind of actions they've taken, 
So this, the different kind of information that you get on dashboard is on top of this menu up here. So it's overview, inside notifications, managers, con uh, connected services, and for your site, uh, what would the Google Plus page insights post analytic look like? Why posts are viewed? So what percentage of a particular post um, are following? How many shares you have had? How many people have visited your profile? So it's basically, it's, excuse me for a second, okay. Basically, uh, it tells you how people are interacting with your posts. Then you can look at action by content type. Um, the average action per post, you have plus ones, shares, and comments, so you can see what type of action different kinds of posts on your page can elicit. So this is really, really great information that you can have. And another thing that is interesting is that this manager section, you can actually assign people to different levels of management for your Google Plus page. So this is all the exciting news. So far, I'm sure there's a lot more, but these are the main exciting ones in the world of social media. Um, if you like what you heard, please like and share the video or like the video if you're watching on YouTube. If you want to be notified about our future workshops or give us feedbacks, you can always go to bit.ly dot ly forward slash feedback underscore sm or just um, connect with me on Google Plus and let me know what you think. And uh, thank you for listening. And I am going to see if anybody has any comments about this wonderful developing news. Anybody has any comments? No? What was the Twitter URL again? It was, let me go back to it. Um, it was ads.twitter.com. I'm going to put it into the chat box. So you can, I put it on the chat box, okay? And then, thank you, this was great. It's about time Facebook fixed something which was broken, yes. <laughs> uh, Cynthia is excited about Facebook hashtags, could be easy to find Instagram users. Oh, that's a great point. Do you want to say something about that, so, Cynthia? Sure. Um, I guess uh, with an Instagram, you know, hashtags are really popular in there, and that's how I found a lot of people to follow, and people have followed me back through using hashtags, and it's something I'm just kind of dipping my toes into right now, but when I share my images on Facebook, those hashtags carry over that I used in my Instagram kind of description. Oh, um, yeah. So now, if those hashtags become clickable, then I can find other people sharing their Instagram images, and that might help me bring up my Instagram following as well. That's a great point, yes. Okay, so um, if nobody has any more questions, please make sure that uh, you join us next week for Pinterest Analytics, which that's exactly where um, you want to be looking for. That's sort of, that's, that's um, how do you say it? The box stops at your analytics. So if you don't know how successful your posts and pins are, then you don't really know if it's making a difference for your business. Um, thank you for spending your Friday morning with me. And I have, I do have a um, uh, OpenSM community. If you are interested in joining our community and carrying you the conversation with our speakers, with me, with uh, Cynthia, please let me know and I'll be happy to send you an invite. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you.